man was made to worship we were created to adore the transcendent people worship and adore charismatic and talented people some people even worship the celestial bodies ladies and gentlemen we have to get back to the heart of worship to the true and living god the heart of worship evangelistic series with pastor nixon lou Give up his life for us. Bow our heads as we pray. Father God in heaven, 
Thank you for your grace and mercies upon our lives. We come by here, O oh God, to worship you and praise you. And the singing was lively. It, was, it sang like people who, who have joy in their heart. And Lord, we are also here to hear your word. You said while you were on earth that it was your custom that you went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and you stood up to read. And as your word is being proclaimed, O oh God, may you minister to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The pussycat look. Everything in life depends on sin. Hello, somebody? If a businessman does not see the benefits of a product, he may never purchase that product. Hello, somebody? Brother Riley, am I speaking the truth? Yes. He's a businessman. If a customer does not see the benefits of the product that is on the shelf or that is advertised, he or she may never buy it. If a student does not see the benefits of a formal and higher education, they may never go to a higher, a higher school of learning. If a man does not see the quality and disposition of the moral fiber they are looking for in a woman, hello somebody, they will never pop the big question, will you marry me? I say sin is important. If the viewers viewing on our YouTube channel is not, don't find the, 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 the channel attractive and that the, the information that is on the, the, the YouTube channel is not beneficial, they will switch the station. That is why we must do our best as we come up here to proclaim the good news of salvation. Is somebody here with the preacher? If a neighbor co-worker or a friend does not see in us, hello somebody, and he or she does, does, does not see or have the urge prompted by a changed life from the neighbor and um, from the schoolmate and from the co-worker, if they don't see a change in our life, they may never have the desire to follow Jesus. I say everything in life depends on sin. While sin is important, it is even more important as to what we see. Because ladies and gentlemen, we see what we want to see. This is a fact. I guess you have heard the story about the, the elephant and the, the six blind men. And they, they said to these guys, come on, go and investigate and tell us what you think uh, that, that animal is. And some came back with different reports. We both, we will see the same event and we'll give it about, we will give it at the very different angles. So we see what we want to see. Hello, somebody. The question is, that I pose to us today is what kind of look do you have as a Christian? What kind of look do we have as Christian here, Christians here in the Monstrat Seventh-day Adventist Church? I guess you have heard about the nursery rhyme. Pussycat, pussycat, where have you been? Pussycat says, I have been to London. To see the queen, I think about, if not all of you have been to London. Or maybe 95%, if it's not 100%. But the other 5% is me, I haven't been to London. <laughs> he has been to London to see the queen. <laughs> they asked Pussycat, 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 what did you see? Pussycat said, I saw a little mouse under the chair. In all of London, all Pussycat saw was a little mouse under a chair. He left Monstrat, hijack and go upon 
Demonstrat or SVTL. He went on BWIA or Virgin. Fly over the Atlantic for eight hours. And when he arrived in London, all what he saw was a little mouse under a chair. He did not see the changing of the British guard. He did not see Buckingham Palace. He did not go to London Bridge. He did not go to the Cathedral of Canterbury. He did not go and ride on the double-decker buses on the top where they have nothing there and you're just on top of there and top of the world riding. He did not go to see Big Ben. Neither he went to see a cricket match at Old Trafford or the Oval. Pussycat saw what Pussycat wanted to see. In all of London, Pussycat saw a little mouse under a chair. Lord Jesus, please help me. Some of us living today in this crucial time of earth's history are just like Pussycat. Is somebody here with the preacher? We see the things that are unimportant. We see the things that are trivial. We see the things that are myopic. They are small in comparison to what is happening in the world. We don't see the things that really matter. We see the things that we want to see. Ladies and gentlemen, but this is not strange. Because about 2,000 years ago, uh, Jesus pointed out to a would-be disciple that is by the name of Nicodemus. He said to Nicodemus uh, that people see what they want to see. He went to Jesus. By night, he was a brilliant man. He went to the top university in Jerusalem. He went to the seminar seminary. Ladies and gentlemen, he can explain the doctrines of the church and without notes. He was of the council of the Sahedron. He heard about Jesus and he went to see Jesus by night. He did not want his big short friends to see him. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, whether you come to him by day or by night, whether you come to him at an open appeal or at your home, and when, you, when the appeal is made, even though whatever way you come to Jesus, Jesus will never cast you out. For Jesus says, he that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Jesus said to Nicodemus, and he's saying to us today, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot see. Unless you are born of water and of the spirit, you cannot see. If someone is not converted, that is being born of the spirit, he or she is still under the influence of the flesh and is driven by the vision of the world. In other words, for us to see the way of God, the way God wants us to see, when we are born again of being converted, God wants us to be able to see the way that he wants us to see when we are converted. If you are not born again, if you are not converted, hello somebody, and you are in the church for a year, for 10 years, for 20 years, year for 40 plus years, until you are able to be, con when you are converted, you are not able to see the things that really matter. Unless you are converted, you cannot see the purpose for prayer. Is the, church is, with the live, is the church with me here today? Unless you are converted, you cannot enjoy a good service. You cannot enjoy a good song service. Sometimes the music sounds a little dry. But when you see you have an encounter with Jesus, in spite of that, you sing and praise the Lord. But if 
you are not converted, the singing becomes dry. Oh, Lord Jesus, please help me here today. If you are not converted, you will not be able to see the need of revival and reformation. The church for many decades, they have been trying to, 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 to get the church, the local church, to have some level of revival and reformation. But if you are not converted, you will not see the need of that. Same old, same old. That's the way it used to be done. That is the way we are accustomed of doing it. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if we, had to, we have to be converted so we could see the value of revival and reformation. You will not see the need of unity to work together for the cause of God. Some people pull in the wet while others on a breeze. They don't see the need that we are living in the last days and we need to give the gospel a certain sound and some people pull in the wet but not everybody. I say ladies and gentlemen when we are converted the church unifies in the work of the living God. If we are converted, we will see the need to forgive one another. Oh God, please help me. When we are converted, ladies and gentlemen, people that hurt us, we will forgive. We are talking about sin, the way God wants us to see, being born of the Spirit. Jesus says the fruit of the spirit is love. Hello, somebody. And when you see you are converted, the fruit of the spirit of love causes you that when somebody hurts you, that you forgive the person. That is what it means, my brothers and sisters, for us to be converted. And let me tell you, people could hurt you real bad, you know. Hello, somebody. I don't know about you. I could talk about my experience. People have said things about me, you know. Hello? I have gone through some crucibles, you know. And let me tell you something. I have learned as a child of God, if I want God to, to forgive my sins, when I go down on my knees, I need to forgive people even though they hurt me to the core. Converted people forgive people that hurt them. Help me, Jesus. Converted people say sorry when they have hurt people. Hello, somebody. There are times when you as a Christian have to say that you are sorry. You have to confess your faults to one another. And we spoke about that in the week. But ladies and gentlemen, there are people that refuse to say that I am sorry. I don't know where this thing comes from. But it seems to be a plague to humanity. People get married, they live together for years, and one partner will never say that I'm sorry. They think that they are always right. But ladies and gentlemen, we understand that the human flesh is folly, that the human flesh will fall, that we have to be prepared as a Christian to say that I am sorry. Because of the little mouse that is under the chair, is on our minds. We cannot see carefully. We cannot see properly. We are blinded. Oh, let me Lord Jesus. Because the little mouse that is under the chair is on our mind. It seems to me, therefore, that this birth of conversion experience is a prerequisite that we see properly and that we have an authentic Christian look. To see the kingdom of God and the proper things in life that matters. We need to have the first birth. But we need also more so to know and to have and to get the second birth. In the first birth, when you're born, the, the, this unique organ that God has given us. Those of you who study biology will understand that the human body is powerful. When you look at the eye and the way it is designed with all the optic nerve and the lenses and the retina and all those things put together, you recognize that for, for you to be able to see properly, all these things have to be in order. So you could see properly. You go to the, to the store. Hello, somebody. 
You go to the store, you have to be able to see with your physical eyes for you to see if the bread is still. Hello? You have to be able to see, ladies and gentlemen, the ingredients on the package so that they could know that if there is something in it, that is not good for you. You need to be able to see physically. The second birth, which is to be the, 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 the birth of, to be born of the spirit. The natural man, the physical man cannot see spiritual things. You could be in this world for a hundred years and you might think you have the, all the knowledge of a hundred years. You cannot see spiritual things with your naked eyes. The second birth, therefore, helps us to see the things that really matter. The pussycat look is killing our spiritual growth. It is obliterating our zeal for Jesus. It is eliminating or eliminating, excuse me, our favor. It robs us of our authentic and religious and spontaneous joy in our Christian experience. It makes us focus only on the negatives. And before we know it, we ourselves become negative. God, please help me here today. There are two instances in the Bible I would like to point to your attention to help us to understand the dangers of the pussycat look. We now go to the screen. Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. And yes, reader, along with everyone here, we have a good crowd. Hello, somebody? We have a good crowd. So I invite you to read the word of God together. We'll read all of it together. From verse 14 to 18, we are talking about sin and sin properly. Hello? It's on the screen? Oh, it's there. On the count of three, reader, two, three. Okay, let's go, let's go. We didn't start together. Reader, I do, is the mic on? Say amen. It's on? Amen. It's not on? Understand? Yes. Okay, very good. It's on? Amen. It's on, it's on. Amen. She has the black mic. Okay, let us read. On the count of three, two, three. That the the cold no. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Let's read, let's read 17 together, and please let us try to do that we online, so we need to do a good job, amen? Let us do 17 together on the count of three, two, three, the Bible says, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Yes, verse 18. I, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayst be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayst be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyesalve, that thou mayst see. I say we're talking about sin. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Amen. It's just 18. We had to do up to 18. Oh. Amen. But thank you for your, your zealousness in reading the word of God. Amen. What we see in the scripture is that the pussycat look has a false and subjective view of themselves. Lord, please help me. Laodicea is understood to be God's 
last day church. If, ladies and gentlemen, you would read the Bible, if with a modern language, we would say when, 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 when the angel is reading to, 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 to the servants, in, when the angel is reading to the, to the church in the end, it will say, ping, you've got mail. The mail is not for individuals that lived in the 19th century. It is for us living in the 21st century. And God is giving us a synopsis. God is helping us to understand our current con condition. So this is relevant stuff. God is speaking to the monstrous Seventh-day Adventist church. God is saying, ladies and gentlemen, to us living in the 21st century, here in Monstrat at this church right now, God is saying that we have a false sense of security. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is the problem that we are faced. God is saying, I have, I know everything. I know the beginning from the end. I am telling you, you are no good. You are wretched, miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. When you read this passage, your mind goes back to that of Malachi. When you read Malachi, God is saying to the Jews, Hey man, you have, you have robbed me. You have done this to me. You are not living right. And, and, and the Jews say, Hey, what have we done? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to be careful that, God, that, that we don't treat God like the children of Israel um, treated God. You know what God did? For the, the Jews, you know what he did? He had to transfer the work that he had for them to a group. He had to cut out and graft a group into the body. We say we're rich. You know, I was speaking to a, a lady yesterday, prominent lady in the, in the, in the community and in, in Montserrat, and she said, Pastor, we listen to you every night on the, on the radio. Even though it comes 9.30, we stay up and we listen. And she's saying that she loves the Seventh-day Adventist church. Amen. She says the work that we are doing here in Monstrat is second to none. Amen. She says that the work we do with the youth ministry and the work that we do with, in the community, people big up the Seventh-day Adventist church. Amen. But ladies and gentlemen, that's not supposed to get to our head. That's not supposed to think that we are above others and that we are above people. But ladies and gentlemen, we have to see ourselves in our true condition. Amen. We are blind. cannot see. I said that some weeks ago here at New Ebenezer. I'm going to say it to us again. There is a problem when you go on Facebook too much. Hello? There's a study that has been done that says that when you frequent Facebook, it affects your self-esteem. Positively or negatively. So when you go on Facebook and you see all the bad that is happening to people, <laughs> make you feel that you're better than others. And you walk with your chest. You, 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 you're bad, you know, but because you, you compare yourself with somebody else, make you feel yourself good. And in the other way, ladies and gentlemen, when you see we go on Facebook and we see individuals, ladies and gentlemen, living their lives, our classmates, people that we grew up in the community with, you see them have house and, and land and property, and you see them, the children, going to University of London, and you see you know, all those things. It make you depressed. Make you feel, oh boy, you know, she's doing better than me, he's doing better than me. I, 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 I need to do better. And, and people suffer from low self-esteem. And you wonder why people suffer from depression. People just suffer from depression. Oh, pastor, I am depressed. I am depressed. People just suffer from depression. There's the, the psychiatrist that comes in every other month. They just have people that are just depressed. What? They're looking at people better than themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters who are here. Laodicea had a false 
concept about itself. And this is what I call the pussycat look. We need to move our eyes on self. And put our eyes on what the Lord is saying to us. The second, the second illustration in the Bible that demonstrates to us the pussycat look is found in Matthew chapter 14 verses 28 to 31. Matthew chapter 14 verses 28 to 31. And of course, the whole concept of that story is that, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that Jesus was out walking upon the sea and the, the disciples, they were out hustling and uh, uh, trying to, 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 to come to, to prevent a boat from sinking in, sinking in a storm. And Jesus came walking to them on the water. And Peter came out and Peter said to Jesus, Hey, Lord, if it is you, please allow me to come to you. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 to 31. What happened there? Rita, you have and, it? And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Yes. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. He was what, everybody? Afraid. But when he saw the wind what? Boisterous. boisterous he was? Afraid. And the Bible says? And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And yeah. Yes, that is it. Thank you very much. The Bible says in this passage, we see and observe in this passage that the pussycat look focuses on the temporal struggles by moving the eyes on Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, for you to fall in love with Jesus, you have to talk with him. Hello, somebody. Amen. You have to hear from him. You talk to him, he talks back to you. Hello. That is communication. Husbands and wives must do that frequently, at least every day. They just interact with one another. When your children are at school, they're overseas, you would make sure you call them and keep in touch with them. Amen. That builds relationship. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you get so busy, some, some wives and some husbands are so busy, they don't have time to talk to one another. Hello, somebody. They're so tired when they reach at home. Bloop, they fall asleep, they sleep, they knock out. No time to speak to one another. That happened for days. It happened for weeks. And ladies and gentlemen, when they check themselves, they are going away from the spouse. When the children get young, when, when, when they reach the age of teenagers, we don't spend time sitting down with them and talking about the things that really matter. We are too busy in getting the education. We are too busy to supply the needs. We are concerned about the things of this world. And as a result, the child raised up in the home, when the child is 16, 17, and 18, you don't recognize the child in the house anymore. You say, I don't know who you are. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we are all concerned about all those other things, but we are not concerned about relationships. And this is what we see here in the story. Jesus wants us to fall in love with him. It's all about Jesus. And there's a text in the Bible, I think it's Paul who wrote it. Paul says, just as you have come to accept Christ, so continue in him. There are individuals where they get to, to know Christ. They would spend time in prayer. They would spend time in the word of the Lord. But now they become successful. They become busy. They don't spend time with Jesus. They are fearful of the economic situation. They are, uh, uh, um, they, they, they are concerned about COVID-19 and its effect on the island. And they're saying, boy, wow, I need to make as much money as possible. They do this and they, they do that so that they could have something secured. They are concerned about the boisterous winds that are around them. And spend less time with Jesus. And the minds are bomb bubble, bomb, 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 gotulated. It's twisted. It is in a haze. It is in a maze. It turns around because of all the problems.
problems and trials that you go into your house, in, into your home. The Bible says, when they saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. The enemy wants to get you nervous about the future. He wants to get you nervous about your health. He wants, ladies and gentlemen, to have us to put our attention on the things of the world so we could move our minds and our eyes on Jesus. He wants us to put our minds on the pleasures of this world. Let me say something about pleasures. It happens to me. I will talk about it. There is something about holding a phone in your hand and flipping through events, not even movies, just events of the world. I get a pleasure in reading international news. If I don't read international news for the day, I don't feel well. I don't feel right about myself. Something is missing. And sometimes when you see I start reading the international news, there is there so much news. When you check yourself, you're on the phone for three and four hours. When, 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 when you see, when you see I get the, 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 the from, from, from um, Apple, they send a report how you spend your hours of the week. I see, tell me, I spend eight hours on the phone. I vex. Eight hours doing what? Just flipping through the phone. And I'm just getting some nice vibes because I'm, I'm reading the news and I'm getting feel like I'm, I'm, I'm doing something useful. But why are you doing that? Jesus, not on your mind. You're flipping through Facebook and going through all those Instagram and all those things. Jesus, not on your mind. The enemy, have your mind on something else, rather on the things of God. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with those kind of things, right? Hello? Don't get me wrong. I am saying, when it takes the place of a relationship with God on a daily basis, that's where we have the problem. This is basic things I'm talking about. This is not no high theology. This is anybody. Who, no, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this. The pussycat look is when we are concerned about every other thing than building a relationship with God. My brothers and my sisters, let us spend time with Jesus. Let's spend time knowing Jesus. And I was telling a, 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 a one of the members the other day, you have to try to change the ways that you speak to the Lord because sometimes it becomes monotonous. You see that you kneel down by your bedside every morning and it becomes a monotony. It's just something that you do as a habit. It doesn't have meaning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to change the way you do it. Mm -hmm. And I've decided to do something different. Go on a prayer walk. Hello? Go on a prayer walk. And while I'm walking, I'm praying. While I'm walking, I am talking to the Lord. So my mind is focused because sometimes I have so much stress as a pastor. When you say I kneel down by my bedside, it's members' problems I'm thinking about. That is when I move my eyes on Jesus. I want my quiet time with him. So I have to walk and talk with him. Go in the wilderness. There's a place up in woodlands. There's a place. There's no house that is good. And I talk to the Lord. This is what God wants us to do. God wants us, my brothers and my sisters, don't listen to the phone, don't listen to Satan right now. I say you got to listen to the words of the living God. Spend time with Jesus. Amen. So you feel your Christian wife, your life getting dry. Do something different, man. Try something different. The enemy is trying to distract you. And let me tell you, I don't know about you, but the human being is such a way that when you are stressed about something, all what the mind thinks about is that thing. Even though sometimes you try to pray, you're not getting through at all. The pussycat look, look at the problems. The pussycat look, look at the pleasures of this world. But the authentic, converted Christian look keeps his minds and eyes on Jesus. Amen. Even this, this we're doing here, you know, um, I have some level of, I, I feel a certain level of satisfaction in where we have come and where we are in terms of technology. How we are able to reach monstra. How we are able to do certain things. We are not perfect yet, but where we were and where we are now, I say praise the Lord. But sometimes the mind is consumed about these things. We look at these things rather than we look at the person that matters. It's all about Jesus, my brethren. 
Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus daily. I'm ending now. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus daily. And by beholding, we become changed. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3, 18, he says, changes, we become changed in the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. When you behold Jesus, you become changed. You become converted. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I need to make an appeal to God's people. Don't have the postcard look. Don't look at others and focus all your attention on the mortgage, on the education, on the children. Those things are important. But don't let it stand in the way of your relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I want to say to God's people, do you really want to have the authentic Christian look? Do you really want to have the authentic Christian look? Do you? Yes. Come on, talk to me, man. Yes. Do you really want to have the, Christ the authentic Christian look? Yes. Do you want to keep your eyes on Jesus? Oh, yes. If that is your desire, wherever you are, just wave your hands. Praise God. Hands down. We'll now turn, go to the, yes. I wish I should have told you, both you and Kevin that from last night, you know. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world, this is what God wants from us. We'll go straight dim in the light of his glory and grace. Now sing this song. I know the two of you all blend together. And I think we could get two others to come with you. Ella Banks, I think I'm going to talk to you to put together a quartet. Give them voice training so that, oh God, so that our singing here could be so sweet and beautiful. We're going to pray just now. Sing this song like you mean it. I invite the church to sing to. You should know that song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow up strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I hope this message means something to you. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things us to put things in perspective. 
You want us, dear Father, to recognize the things that are really important in life. You have put us upon this earth and you said to us, to occupy till you come. And that we are doing. Father, help the occupying do not take the place of the Savior who gives the gifts. God, we do not want to have that unconverted look. We don't want to look at ourselves and think that we are good because there is none good no not one we all have sinned and come short of your glory David says there's nothing good within him Paul says chief of sinners do I be we must never look at ourselves as we have arrived we must always look at ourselves that we are always in need of the grace of God because of this, Father, your church, the Monstrat Seventh day Adventist Church, those who are listening online, we want you to be first and foremost in our lives. Please forgive us for putting the job before you. Please forgive us for putting our problems and our health before you. Please forgive us in putting the assignments of school before you. Help us and forgive us for even putting COVID-19 before you. Father, it's all about you. The more we look at you and the more we grow close to you is the more we will become like you. And the more we will become like you is the more we are light to our community. Light when we walk through the streets. Light when we go over Facebook light when we go over Instagram and WhatsApp and all these other things oh father it's all about you please have mercy upon us because we have not been faithful to you and help us now forever to make you first and center in our lives in Jesus name we pray amen and amen God bless you everyone stood thank you very much please be seated please be seated thank you